Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordo. We are the founders of Lumia. And we're super passionate about all things coaching, and we want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training thousands of life coaches. Let's dive into the science and magic of coaching. On today's episode, Noelle and I are going to talk about relational fitness coaching, an antidote to the loneliness epidemic. I have no idea what this is, so thank God Noelle is here. All right. I know. I know. Oh, <laughs> it sounds excited. amazing. It, it, you know, honestly, it is amazing, and and you're going to enjoy this one because it's it's both of our wheelhouses as far as coaching goes. Um, so I follow coaching. I follow coaching trends. Mm -hmm. This comes to us from the Global Wellness Summit, one of my favorite sources of information for all things wellness. Mm -hmm. And this was extrapolated from a bunch of research that I've been doing on what are the newest niches in coaching and where where are things really blowing up in the world in 2023 in real time. And one of the things that's happening is a booming business in relational fitness coaching. Mm. What is relational fitness coaching? Yes, it's basically coaches or other professionals that are helping other people develop the skills they need to build meaningful connection to other people. Mm. Yeah. It seems so basic, yeah. but why are we talking about this? Why is this happening now? Um, the pandemic, dun, dun, dun. This mm -hmm. has obviously caused so much havoc in our world, continues to cause havoc. But given the pandemic as one point, uh, divisive politics, quite honestly, as another, and technology, where we're always on our phones or our computers, people are seeing each other in person less yeah. than in any other point in history. Yeah, and and I'm thinking about the generation that um, you know grew up uh, uh, with tech, um, and, and, you know, um, uh, FaceTime and all of that text, um, they're not used to in person, <laughs> so they don't even know, they don't even like, this is normal for them. You know, it's supposed to like me growing up, even, um, um, when I was, uh, Growing up early uh, in my, I don't know, 20s, teens, high school, to ask someone out on a date, there was no internet, no apps or anything. You actually had to do something in person, wow. uh, muster up the courage to, to ask someone out. The, the kids today, that's not even a thing. No. Maybe it is, but not really. Well, you can, I mean, I, I, I see a lot of like videos of people with cute little signs, like, will you come to the prom <laughs> with me? So I think like, you know, yeah. that's happening. We're making yeah. signs, but. Um, Mostly to yeah. DM or a swipe. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, you know, this is, this is one of the realities that we face in our world today. Yeah. Um, Another reason that this is happening right now is that empathy rates, being able to empathize with another person, have been steadily dropping mm. since 1979. Wait, and why is that? I think it's because of technology. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's because of the disintegration of the fabric of society. Like we really don't have a civic civic minded society anymore. We don't have mm -hmm. communal watering holes. You know, you might see your neighbors at the post office, but when was the last time you actually went to a post office, John? Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? Or uh, uh, lick the stamp or not even lick the stamp. There's stickers now, right? Yeah. 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 But, and, and just, it's like stuff like that. Like we don't have communal gathering points. Like we used to, people aren't going to places like church as much, you mm -hmm. know, the activities are, have been kind of, you know, commodified. Um, so there's just been a, a huge decrease in empathy on a global scale. Um, and that has resulted in the fact that people are legitimately scared to talk to each other. Also, I got to say, uh, we are more impatient now because everything is uh, instant gratification. So with humans, you have to be patient in order for empathy to even, you know, enter. If you're impatient, you're also uh, probably not listening, not being there and in your head. And so, yeah, th there's a, a disconnection, you know. Absolutely. And it breaks down further. People are a 2022 poll. Um, 25% mm -hmm. of people now feel anxious about socializing. And oh, if we get even more specific on that, it's a, it's the point of not knowing what to say or how to interact. 
It was yeah, really it's two so things. sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's and and it's because people don't know how to be friends anymore. That's that is the mm. crux <laughs> of all of this. And that is why relational fitness coaching is popping up. How do how do you for uh, anyone listening? You're like, you know, what? I don't even know if I know how to be friends anymore. What what are what are <laughs> what are some what's some primer to be friends? Well, empathy, I mean, gosh. empathy, empathy, um, connection, honesty, uh, vulnerability. All of these like kind of big human words. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's a huge measure of getting over yourself. Right. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and I don't say that in a way to detract from folks, because in our society, there's this idea of toxic individualism. Yeah. Um, technology certainly doesn't help where you're able to hide behind your phone. You're able to hide behind your screen and posture and project mm-hmm. and make a mirage of this is who I am. This is how I want to present myself to the world. And smack on the other side of that is shame and fear that mm-hmm. someone will find out that you're not as cool as you present, that you're not as cool as you say you are, that you're not as funny as your online quips, right? And so in order to actually have a real friendship with each other, with someone, with anyone, you have to be willing to be imperfect and weird and gross yeah. and like not normal because none of us are normal. We're all weirdos. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it makes uh, people feel less alone. Um, I think uh, also, you know, cancel culture being um, very fast to judging and making assumptions about people is definitely not helping. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And when I was looking at the work of relational fitness coaching, it is so simplistic because the core of it is empathy. But the other piece of it is straight up active listening which is one of the core Mm -hmm. features of coaching and of coach training. That is one of the first things that you learn as a coach. And that is what's happening in this space right now. Um, The people who founded Peloton, um, or not Peloton, I have it wrong. I'm going to say this line again. The people who founded SoulCycle, Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Cutler and Julie Rice, spent 16 years um, kind of taking a look at everything. And what they're doing now is they started a new venture um, where they're having people come and do 60-minute guided group conversations. It's called Peoplehood. Oh. That's their new venture. So instead wait, of wait, bikes, in person? Yeah. Oh, wow. It can be, yeah. It can be in person or it can be virtual. Mm-hmm. And everybody gets a chance to talk freely and listen deeply. Nobody's mm. allowed to interrupt. And Everybody has to express support. And if you, you, if you want to, you can make silent gestures, but like, those are the ground rules. And this is a a business that is in development. It's operating now. And this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so essentially these are listening circles, (laughs) which have been around, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're trying to, um, um, instead of uh, 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 physical fitness, they're doing mental, emotional fitness. Or creating That's exactly it. Yeah. Hence relational fitness, you know, mm-hmm. hence hence what it is. And so I, I was taking a look at this and I was like, okay, you know, this is interesting. Like these are such simple concepts that are being monetized by people using coaching skills. Um, there was a New York Times article that addressed the need how to make friends as an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, it went viral. Then have you ever heard of the term schadenfreude? Schaden what? Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. What is it? Schadenfreude is your ability to find joy in another's fortune. Mm, right? That's very rare. <laughs> really? I, I mean, I, I, I mean, maybe because I live in Los Angeles. Um, no, I mean, mm-hmm. I have friends, of course, that, and also myself, when uh, things happen to people that we care about and love, um, yeah, they're, you know, I'm happy for them and joy, but... Overall, I mean, most people are like judgment, jealous and, you know, why can't that happen to me and, you know, all that stuff. I think that's actually symptomatic of what's going on in society because Mm. it's that toxic individualism that if I can't do it, if I can't do it by myself, I'm wrong or bad. And then when you hear good news about somebody else, you automatically turn the mirror back on yourself and put yourself down. 
Right, right. Internalize that. I think you're less. This is why we have relational fitness coaching now because of Mm. this exact problem. (laughs) Yes. And also, uh, you know, it it just also tells me there's not only a need for it, but there's more opportunity for coaches to do something specific like this. Oh, yeah. It turns out that Schattenfreude is actually really good for you. And Mm. it, it gives you a tremendous physical and mental health benefits. And there is now training on it, that you can go and take training on how to find joy in other people's success. Wow. It reminds me of the of gratitude, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Which is a really powerful practice. And if we think about um, functional relationships and how functional communities work, how functional families work, Mm-hmm. If one person is experiencing joy or success, that tends to have truly positive impact for the whole. And so I don't know where we got off track as a society in thinking that that's somehow a, a bad thing because it it's really goes against the grain of what um, collectivism actually yeah. is. Yeah. Right? Like even like you and I were – we're friends and, but we're business partners. So like if something good happens to me or something good happens to you, guess what? It benefits the other just period. What do you, do you think capitalism has somehow laid tracks with this of uh, in our yeah. inability to be happy for other people when they're successful? I, I, I do. I do. I mean, I, I could say that, that, that might go back to the way that, um, you know, designer goods were developed as a way to like show your worth Mm -hmm. that you have to be able to afford a certain thing in order to have that outward expression. I also think um, commercialism, like actual commercials, advertising Mm -hmm. has a hand in that because there's the entire infrastructure industry that now social media has kind of been built on the back head and shoulders of that says you're supposed to look a certain way, yeah. act a certain yeah. way, present these things, and then you'll have some reward or payoff. Um, but there really isn't a reward or payoff, at least not mm-hmm. one that I've ever been able to discern with real staying power. Yeah. And also, um, I think inflation <laughs> is uh, frustrating a lot of people because the cost of living is just crazy. And so when something, if you're in that kind of um, space and, and good things are happening to people around you, you just kind of feel like you're drowning more and more, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and, you know, I think that this might also be why trends like this are taking off is because the commercial things are no longer bringing the, the, the satisfaction that they promise. Mm-hmm. And people are taking a hard look in the mirror and saying, you know what? I'm really lonely. Yeah. Uh, and not and, only am I own lonely, but this is uh, maybe what I want is different. Maybe it's not about, yeah, the, um, you know, expensive watch or the corner office. Maybe um, I can find things of value that are uh, in experiences or something that is, um, relational. Yeah. And I don't know what you are seeing in the world, but this particular time in 2023, it seems like everybody's really having a hard time. Like most of the people that I know are are having a hard time. Are you seeing the same thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think living in the city where things are crazy expensive, Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing that all around me, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, just people me, barely getting by, you know, barely just kind of like survival mode. So, it, and it's not just economic. Um, you know, I I think what, what what my observation is is we came through the pandemic, or at least the lockdown uncertainty phase of the pandemic, and then 2022 was like rip the bandaid off, woohoo, you know, get back into the world. And then there's this collective trauma that was just never dealt with, mm-hmm. and all of the painful gaps that were open from systemic inequality were never resolved. And, you know, as you're saying, like the the inflation has kind of run away. And then, um, 
you know, even looking at injustice, like with George Floyd, like that was never mm-hmm. resolved. Like all yeah. the problems are just still ongoing and all of the things that we were trying to do to get back to some sort of like normal existence haven't worked. Yeah. And so this is an opportunity that we have as, um, as coaches to, to bring people together in these circles for listening and for um, self-discovery. And I wanted to get your perspective on this because I know that you've been having retreats and, um, and working in groups and speaking of schadenfreude, you know, joy in other people's experiences. You know, when I was, when I was learning about peoplehood and the guided group conversations that revolve around active listening, I was like, oh, that's really, you know, interesting. And then I was wondering how I would feel as a practitioner moving into a space with a bunch of strangers and really having these, these deep experiences with them. So what has it been like for you? Um, can I just say, I just, uh, as you're asking me this, I just had a, um, a thought, uh, all my coaches that I, that you adventure coach, Sarah Williams, uh, Paul, Shame, Brandon, who does breath work, they're all Lumia graduates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm really, uh, that's meaningful to me. It's great. I love it. Keeping it in the family. Um, I was not a retreat person. I had no interest. I had no interest in retreats. And for fun, I ran a men's retreat just for fun because uh, uh, we have this little house in Idlewild, very intimate. And from that experience, I realized, oh my gosh, this is so needed. And the the men they left uh, just so moved, and they came in so thirsty. And I think it's a direct reflection of what you're talking about, um, mm-hmm. where the world is at, what we're all craving. And so because of that, I was like, oh, I'm just going to do these backyard retreats um, just yeah. two hours away. I don't have to get on a plane. It doesn't have to be, you know, lavish with massages. And it's just really like back to the basics, like summer camp. And um, what's really cool about that is it really um, goes back to just foundational human connection. Um, you may not be friends with this person, but in this space, there's openness and um you know, communication and, and uh, some kind of collision where people are leaving with, with with a shift. And so I've been witnessing the power of that. And I've, you know, run already like three, and I'm just going to keep doing it every few months um, because it's, I feel like the world needs this. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing, seeing the, the, in their eyes, I'm seeing how thirsty they are for this. And it's probably because of just the temperature of the world today. Oh yeah. And how, how do you, protect yourself how do you protect your energy as a practitioner you know moving oh, into um, this space a, a team <laughs> so it's not just me because <laughs> yeah. you're right you know it's important for me to not um i don't want it i didn't want it to be like another thing i have to do um get burnt out you know run group sessions which i've been doing for my entire life where i don't like it anymore so uh yes so <laughs> lumia coaches um uh, bringing in friends rock stars and then um, we all kind of like the adventures. We all have our strengths. And so whether it's Sarah taking them on a guided hike or me doing a process group on relationships or, you know, Brandon doing breath work, um, it's us collectively, even the team, uh, helping instead of just me, me doing it, you know. And that's made it so – that's made it enjoyable for me where it doesn't feel like work. I mean, just this conversation is like – proving the outcome of this work and like why it's necessary. So what I'm hearing from you is that um, one of the most important things if you're you're working with clients in this way is to have um, a team of other people with you that you actually mm-hmm. like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that you like, that you enjoy yeah. their company. And then, you know, the other thing that I'm hearing loud and clear is that Lumia coaches are the best. And um yes. And, and I've actually, I've, I've actually heard that from a couple of different, um, groups that utilize Lumia coaches, that they're just a really amazing set of people. And I couldn't agree more. Um, and what I'm hearing from you too, is like taking breaks so that like Mm -hmm. you switch off so that like when, when one person's on the others off and you actually, you know, get that, that downtime, is there anything that you wish you had known you know, before going into your first experience? Um, you, you know what I have proven to myself is that 
uh, you know, retreats over the years have become or can be bougie and, you know, uh, Costa Rica, Bali, all these kind of, you find yourself by going to another country and having these um, very uh, exotic exotic experiences and i've proven to myself that it's not that is not needed we yeah. rent too many vans we meet at a hotel <laughs> like it's just up in the woods and it's just all you need is um open-minded people a safe space um you know good coaches and good food the food is um for sure food. <laughs> yes food is food is there at the top but that's all you need and the magic happens and so what's not needed uh, is anything fancy yeah so kind of bridging off of this trend and thank you so much for for sharing your own experience um implicit in this you know relational skills coaching is this idea of circles mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. to what extent do you utilize like circles conversation sharing and listening in your retreats yeah that's it's, that's all it is it's a, it's that and then uh somatic experiences so whether it's an ice plunge or a guided so it's a combination of uh, this relational fitness circles, right? Um, without the expensive drop-in fee. And then nourishment, amazing food by a chef. And then uh, the, uh, the uh, somatic in nature. And I think the combination of all three makes it uh, really magical. It's, it really feels like summer camp back when you were, you know, um, 12 years old or 15 or whenever you had that magical summer. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And it's not... I'm glad that it feels like magic, but it's um, it's not magic. Where yeah. where this fits it feels like in, magic because we don't have it in our lives. <laughs> I, right, it, yeah. it does it, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and I, you know when I was taking a look at this, and I of course where my mind goes is like okay frameworks, academics, evidence based. Mm -hmm. Like where does this show up? Um, <clears throat> for me, it was Martin Seligman's PERMA model, mm -hmm. where positive relationships is one of five elements for human flourishing yeah and like that's just at the the core of it um so if there's somebody out there who's thinking about becoming a coach or is one of our lumia graduates or students or wants to join a program and you and i have both built very beautiful careers mm -hmm. all around relationships yep. um what what advice would you give folks who are at the starting line of thinking about doing this work? Uh, to actually do, um, to do before thinking, because if you think too much, uh, there's going to be uh, fear that leaks in and then you're not going to do. And so just go take the step, get yourself yeah. into a classroom or a retreat or whatever. Um, give your body the experience where you're like, Oh, I love this. Or I could do this. Um, Cause if you get lost in thinking, usually uh, the thing that you want or that you need or that you deserve uh, drifts further and further away. Mm. Yeah. And I would say that something I've observed, uh, even in myself and transparently, you know, I'm an off the charts extrovert, I'm pretty optimistic just naturally. And I like people, mm -hmm. but I have experienced sometimes fear or resistance mm. before going into a session with a new client or yeah, going yeah. into work with a group or going in to teach a class and that that's totally normal. Um, but when I'm actually in the space and in the presence of another human, it's really easy to love people mm. and it's really easy to understand that we're all just the same weirdos yeah and it's not it doesn't feel hard in the moment when mm -hmm. you're in the moment it's actually quite you know beautiful all of this is a form of loving people just it simply really put, is it's simply put it's a it's a form of loving people yeah it's a form of loving people and i i think it's um it's a beautiful um I think it's a beautiful trend that we're that we're experiencing as helping mm -hmm. professionals. Like if this is where coaching is going, hallelujah, because yeah. we need to build connectivity, you know, as a society. Like I, I think about like Logan, like she hasn't mm -hmm. figured out how to be freaked out yet, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, like she's still in her little magical age and yeah. I really want the world to be different for her. Mm. Um, 
So we all need to hold hands now to make sure that that can happen. Thank you for the reminder. And uh, if this uh, resonates or it speaks to you in some way, um, answer that call. That yes. call is coming from inside the house. Yes. And put out your shingle. Go be a yes. relational coach. We need yeah. more. Thank you for listening. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to lumiacoaching.com slash everything. Explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose, and a bold community to do it with. Lumia is ready to equip you with the tools, training, and community you will need to reach your goals. If you're ready to build a unique coaching business on your own terms while making an impact on the world at large, Lumia is the next bold step in your coaching journey. That's lumiacoaching.com slash everything. And hey, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it.